Bird Fellowship Program was initiated with the first Bird Fellow in 1987. I believe Bird Polar changed its name from Institute of Polar Studies to the Bird Polar Research Center in 1986. The Bird Fellowship was initiated with funds that are generated by an endowment. And the name, it, it's a named endowment for uh, Admiral Richard E. Bird and his wife Marie. But we simply call it the Bird Postdoctoral Fellowship. We have a competition for this. It is uh, announced, um, the, the opening for applications is announced on our website. It's announced in professional venues such as uh, with AGU's EOS. Uh, we have a selection committee that reviews the applications and the letters of support from ideally uh, their, uh, the candidates' prior faculty uh, advisors. Um, so we've been very fortunate to have just an outstanding set of Bird Fellows since 1987. Still a structural geologist, I'm interested in mountain building processes and rock deformation. About four years ago, I published a, a book, Reading the Rocks, the Autobiography of the Earth, which has um, seen some modest success in, in science writing. Uh, I'm working on several things, but primarily I'm working on uh, black carbon, so little nanoparticles of soot trapped in snow and ice, and its uh, distribution in the Earth's atmosphere and its history and how it relates to uh, the history of fire and climate. My specialty has always been to look at organic matter in marine sediments as tracers for past events and past organisms like uh, ocean productivity or vegetation on land. And so. At the moment, I'm working on sending out invitations uh, for a NATO advanced research workshop on environmental security in the Arctic Ocean that I'm convening with a co-director from the Russian Academy of Sciences. Uh, this is the first formal dialogue between NATO and Russia regarding security. Uh, I'm working on instrumentation to deploy through the ice sheet to the base of the ice sheet to so subglacial hydrological instrumentation deep ocean instrumentation. One of these nice tools, toys, is a remote operated underwater vehicle which folds and unfolds that we can uh, deploy it through a narrow ice borehole into the water-filled sub-ice shelf cavity. I still uh, work hard on the ice core record in China. I also have a, a new project that I'm going to Antarctica for just in a few weeks here where we'll be flying uh, unmanned aerial vehicles, uh, robotic planes, uh, to make some measurements. The that I'm working on currently, uh, well, the main one really, is uh, establishing a, a lake-based paleoclimate research program uh, in Asia, uh, specifically on the Tibetan Plateau and in the Himalaya. Well, um, my research work, uh, which is uh, just part of my job, is uh, involves uh, getting lake sediment cores out of the tropical Andean lakes. Um, I'm also doing some local work here in upstate New York on uh, glacial geology and lake sediment records of environmental change and pollution records and so forth. I'm looking at how organic carbon is cycled through a polar environment. And it's uh, using fossil tundra, some fossil tundra that actually uh, I discovered while I was getting my PhD, uh, to use as a paleoclimate indicator. I continue to work on uh, problems in plate tectonics in general. So right now I'm very much involved in um, the the planning process and, and logistics of um, participating in a large expedition. I could, I could actually start with our first one in 1987 okay. and tell you a success story for every one of them. Mm -hmm. it, it, it would be interesting to have a map and put on the map, you know, all, where all of our bird fellows are currently located. And what we would see is that we, they're literally around the globe. I did a field season down in Antarctica, um, which was fantastic. The fellowship, um, I got the chance to go to Antarctica. And for me, that was one of the main uh, unique and characteristic aspects of the bird fellowship. Not many fellowships uh, provide the opportunity to work in Antarctica. And by working there, after that experience, I felt, boy, if I can do research in Antarctica, I can do research anywhere else. 
<laughs> and so I eventually ended up working in uh, Southern Africa. I worked in South Africa, Zimbabwe, and Mozambique. And then uh, about four years ago, I did two field seasons in Madagascar. Entirely different experience. And now I'm working in China. Um, and so that was the most recent field experience as well. Uh, we were just down in New Guinea for two months collecting ice cores from the Kachaya region, where uh, yeah, basically the area around the Kachaya, which is the highest peak in Indonesia. I'm preparing to go to Greenland for two and a half months. And I continue to work in the high latitude regions of the Arctic, um, Arctic Norway and Canada. The tropical Andean lakes, the high elevation lakes in Peru and Bolivia and Ecuador. My work is in the polar regions and I do work both in the Arctic and the Antarctic. I haven't been out in the field yet, I've been mostly a lab rat. One of the things that we do now is we ask potential, uh, we ask our bird fellow applicants to identify one or two people, ideally like group leaders here in the bird center, uh, get in contact with them and make sure that if you are going to have someone who's going to be committed to working with you as a mentor. When I was a bird fellow, my mentor was Dave Bromwich and I worked in the polar meteorology group that he heads at the Bird Polar Research Center. The work that I did while I was with Dave was primarily focused on uh, atmospheric modeling in the polar regions. And uh, working with Dave, we developed a model called the Polar MM5, which was um, uh, widely used in the US from uh, the late 90s until about uh, 2005 or so. And Willen, Willens, who of course was a glaciologist, was a wonderful mentor to me because he studied glacial flow and ice deformation in the solid state and many of the approaches that he used to understand the ice streams in Antarctica could be translated to understanding rock deformation. So Ian really acted as, as my primary advisor. Um, but I should also mention Terry Wilson, who's a structural geologist, and David Elliott, who was the director of the, the center at that time. Um, all of these people were really important mentors to me when I came. My mentor was Steve Foreman. Um, who uh, was there in the 90s for uh, probably at least 10 years, I think. I followed the professor Lonnie Thompson and do the ice core record the here and the studies the uh, ice cores from the Tibet Plateau and we reconstruct about the 500 years climate change was there. I worked with Case and Bea. That was, or Case was my official mentor and I mainly worked with Case and Bea on energy balance modeling of Greenland, of Jakobshafen Glacier, was involved in some ice sheet bed topography from the um, radar flights, which I think Ian Willens did. And I also worked with Bea and Case on uh, the ISAT and airborne laser altimetry data investigating surface elevation changes caused by subglacial hydrology in West Antarctica. I think also Ian Willens uh, had started some of that work. Well, I was mentored by Dr. Barry Lyons, um, and he was involved with the LTER, which is a long-term ecological research program. Barry is a world-renowned scientist and a polar researcher, so to be able to learn from him is just invaluable. And, you know, Lonnie is obviously very famous in the paleoclimate community, so just having his, uh, his name on proposals and, and the recognition that comes with that has been tremendously helpful, particularly in New Guinea. I mean, that project in particular would not have been possible for the ice cores without you know, somebody in that kind of time in his career where they can do those types of projects. So the, uh, I guess the mentorship is really, you know, we as postdocs are supposed to have our own ideas and our own direction, and then they can help to facilitate where you want to go. And so I think it's been really helpful so far. Uh, primarily my uh Mentor was Ellen Mosley Thompson, but it was also uh, Lonnie Thompson, and um, and the whole uh, uh, paleo group actually, including Jahon Koldai at that who was there at the time. Uh, I'd also include Mary Davis uh, in in that list. Um, and at the time, we were working on uh, some Greenland ice cores with uh, as part of the Parker project, and uh, also uh, Kilimanjaro. Uh, ice core that Lonnie had had uh, drilled at the time, 
the, the part of the mentoring mentorship project uh, program there, I, I came exposed to the uh, research, how how competitive research grants work in the U.S. And so basically, the, the success of my career really spawned out of my time at Bird. Now, one of the one of the limitations on the Bird Fellowship is that these people have to be within five years of receiving their PhD. Generally, our, our postdoctoral fellows are within one year. They're, so they're very newly minted PhDs. Our expectations for the Bird Fellows uh, is that they will come here. They will interact with our other research scientists, faculty, and uh, students. And one of their primary goals is to publish, to get papers submitted from their dissertation research. Uh, in general, our Bird Fellows do not come here to Bird Polar with the idea that this is going to be their permanent home. They actually come here viewing this as a position that will allow them to jumpstart their professional careers. The, my time at Bird was really the a pivotal point in my life, I think. Um, many of the ideas that I'm working on now were really seated uh, at my time in Bird. It was really the, my, I, I'd say my indoctrination into the uh, full-fledged research. I think the Bird Fellowship uh, really opened up doors and opened up my eyes to what was possible in terms of doing international research uh, in geology. What I was working on was just, uh, you know, some more traditional glacial geology. But then Bird was where I, I shifted away from that PhD work and started this new work. Uh, it was just the tip of the iceberg though, so now it's, it's uh, greatly expanded. So one of the aspects of the teaching course at Ohio State was the outcome was the, was the Antarctic Treaty Searchable Database, and that emerged into new types of projects. Uh, we have a project with the Marine Mammal Commission involved in several hundred different types of treaties and conventions that have been adopted by the United States. Uh, another outcome of the course was a book you know, on uh, science and policy global lessons from Antarctica that was published uh, by Academic Press in 2002. It's uh, very, very important for me mm -hmm. because uh, about the one and a half years experience uh, gave me a better position in China. So Dr. Wong came as a, as a bird fellow. He spent 18 months with us. While he was here, he published a number of papers, a very, a very excellent paper. It was, he published as the first author in Geophysical Research Letters. Uh, and he is now back in China, and he is back in Lanzhou, and he is now the director of the Division of Cryosphere and Global Change at what was then called uh, the LIGG, but now is called the Cold and Arid Regions Environmental and Engineering Research Institute, which is one of the institutes and centers that sits under the Chinese Academy of Sciences. So he came as a, as a young postdoc, had his experiences here, made connections very broadly, not just here at Ohio State, but with colleagues of of ours, meaning bird polar colleagues around the world, and now he is back in Lancho as a center director. Well, it, it definitely expanded my um, research consciousness, I think, in the sciences. I think for everybody, going to graduate school is a rather narrowing experience where you're asked to delve very deeply into a very narrowly defined question and when I came to the Bird Center I was surrounded by glaciologists and climatologists and people who were working on many different aspects of the Earth system. Um, my office was right next to Lonnie Thompson's and so I was always overhearing conversations about ice cores um, and I, so for me it was the beginning of a much greater awareness of fields outside my own and real interest in larger questions about geology and the climate system. And that's certainly been something that's been important to me, um, especially teaching at a, a liberal arts college where we have fairly small departments and um, I've been very much involved with the environmental studies program here. I've had to be able to speak comfortably with people across many disciplines and I, I credit my time at the Bird Center as, as helping me to be fluent in other <laughs> disciplinary languages. The, uh, my, my time at Bird Polar was 
fantastic in that after I'd finished my PhD, my, uh, my graduate work had been very narrow and very focused on a, a specific problem in the Antarctic. And when I came to Bird Polar, I got to uh, see a much broader uh, spectrum of polar research. And so Dave's research took me from doing just Antarctic work to doing both Arctic and Antarctic work. Um, I got to spend time talking to lots of the other scientists at Bird Polar, uh, learning about sort of the, the wide range of polar research that's done. Uh, so it really helped broaden me quite a bit as a scientist and something that uh, was essential for my future career success as a, a professor at the University of Colorado. The Bird Fellowship Program um, made it uh, made a very nice transition for me into uh, this faculty job. You know, I'd like to stay in the research teaching kind of faculty area. Uh, so, you know, I'll be applying every year pretty much for jobs until I get one. I learned a lot about interacting with students, which is important for me now, since now I'm taking graduate students myself. This fall I'm teaching two classes. One is entitled Climatology, and another is entitled uh, field instruments uh, for in uh, boundary layer climatology. I teach two classes, typically a semester, so four classes a year. So I teach um, a number of different classes at the University of Colorado. I teach our introductory meteorology class, which is uh, a big freshman lecture class with 350 students. I teach uh, several senior level undergraduate classes. Uh, one is atmospheric dynamics, and uh, for that class actually is a textbook that I co-authored um, with my postdoc advisor at, uh, that I had at the University of Colorado. And then I also teach a desert meteorology class where we uh, basically look at the weather and climate of deserts around the world. And then at the graduate level, I teach um, one of our graduate core classes on atmospheric dynamics and I also teach a weather forecasting seminar. It has happened with so many of our bird fellows is that they will send us new fellows. They will send us graduate students and they will, because of their positive experience, be recommending that their PhDs, newly minted PhDs, uh, apply for the bird fellowship. It's all about getting high quality people, getting them all connected, establishing you know good friendships good co good collegial relationships and then everything else just kind of falls in place uh, I've come to know a lot of people who represent uh, expertise in a lot of fields and I think that going forward um, I'll look to either collaborate with them or just draw on their expertise and I think that'll really expand my horizons into more uh, polar research and, and uh, have a more global perspective on, on paleoclimatology and some of these analyses. Well, you know, there's a bunch of us in that little windowless uh, collection of offices <laughs> there. <laughs> uh, I think Jeff Seltzer was there and Amy Leventer, Reed, um, Paul Berkman and Reed Shearer and I were uh, in that group of, of offices and, and uh, it, was a, it was a good group and a lot of camaraderie and, and uh, is a fun group, a really hard working group and I think a lot of the you know at that age in your in your career um, it's really good to see other people um, dedicated and focused on what they're doing and um, really committed to it and and that was a, it was really a really good environment to be in at that time. My relationship uh, that I formed with Barry uh, and Yo while I was here and through them with other people uh, Yo's research group and Barry's research group and the LTER crowd through Barry. And these are things that sort of continue to this day, uh, years later. Um, I keep in contact with people, and uh, especially Barry and Yo. I mean, I consider them as friends now. Um, and that, that's probably more important than, than anything. It is quite interesting in a way how many people are connected with the Bird Polar Research Center throughout glaciology in the Antarctic field, whether it's glaciology, metrology, or anywhere else. It's you talk about with people, and then ah, you also a bird fellow. <laughs> you, you've done your undergrad, you've done your grad, you you've done your doctoral studies there. It's very interesting. Uh, and so it wasn't you know it wasn't just my group. I actually. Um, socialized with a lot of with the other bird fellows and uh, 
with people from from Bird, and so and I'm so, some of those people I'm still in contact with today. Uh, and so you know, it was it was a great experience, and I want to thank Bird for, for giving me that that chance. And I would also add that uh, I met my wife at Bird. <laughs> Alan Ashworth, who actually also has a connection to the bird, he did a, yeah. he, I think he was there for about six months on, on a kind of sabbatical. In the late 80s and early 90s, we, we were among the very few graduate students working in Peru up in the high Andes at the time the country was in a, in a civil war. Um, and there weren't many researchers there, and that's changed a lot now. But um, Jeff and I um, became very good friends at the Bird Center, and, and in fact, that first research grant that I mentioned earlier, he and I wrote that together to get funded. And um, we spent that summer of 93 in part um, coring lakes up in, up in the high Andes in Ecuador, um, and that was the first field season that I had spent with Jeff. And, we went on to spend uh, the ne much of the next um, 10 plus years doing um, projects together in Peru and Ecuador and Bolivia. And um, he also, I think during his postdoc uh, year at, or year and a half or two years, I guess it was at, at the Bird Center, uh, that was when he got the Lake Titicaca drilling project um, started with um, some colleagues at, uh, at Duke and, and uh, and, and elsewhere, and that was a big, big project for him. And um, it was, it was uh, of the group of postdocs that were in in that cluster of offices. I think it was all in the same fall. We all sort of moved to upstate New York. Uh, I went to Union College, and Jeff went to Syracuse, which is just a couple hours down the road. And Amy Leventer went to Colgate, mm -hmm. and uh, it was sort of like a bird center east up here. And I, <laughs> dispersed way. I'm also continuing to work with Tim Paulson, actually, who was the bird fellow after after me, I believe. Mm -hmm. And Tim and I and Anne Bruno continue to do publish papers together on Antarctic stuff. Uh, bird Polar Research Center has a lot of um, what I call um, down the hall expertise. Um, I, I don't really have to go very far to get solutions to uh, um, questions or I, I don't have to go far to um, get uh, documents. Uh, like we have this wonderful library at uh, at the center, and um, um, within usually within less than a day, I've got uh, my hands on some often obscure, <laughs> you know, piece of um, some publication. I'm, I'm usually asking the librarian for um, you know something that was printed. 20 or 30 years ago in, 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 in some cases in journals that are no longer in print. Um, but uh, the library here at Ohio State and, and Bird Center is, is, is really good. Um, and, uh, and, and that's, um, I think, a good example of, of the, the scale of this university. The, my experience at Bird was that all the, everyone else, uh, the staff members, um, including Lynn, I, I had a really positive experience with all the, the um, people that make up BIRD. Uh, the time at the BIRD Center was an important development period. I, uh, just after finishing my PhD, spent about 15 years at the BIRD Center before my academic home in Santa Barbara. Um, and uh, any friends and opportunities emerged during that period, so I appreciate the opportunity provided by people like David Elliott's uh, leadership at the time when, I, when he was the director. Right, Barry Lyons, Lonnie and Alan Thompson, Dave Bromwich, David Elliott, and then and Grunov, Kenczesek, uh, all of them were really helpful. And Well, one thing I have to say, the administrative staff, you, Lynn, the other Lynn, Charmaine, Laura, Tom, all the people in a way behind the scenes in a way working there was really helpful and that was great. I miss everyone there, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, a great time, I had a great time at the uh, Bird Center. Um, lots of people, I have uh, many friends that I still um, are connected with. So for me, in retrospect, when I think of uh, the time I spent at the Bird Center, I realized that was a really important time of growth, um, envisioning myself not as a student anymore, but as a practitioner of science. And I'll always be grateful for that.